February the 23rd, 2005, in Citrus County, Florida. That was the last normal day in the Lynchford household. That was the last normal day for Jesse. The yellow orange dot is the Lunsford home. The black dot is the defendant's trailer. He noticed Jesse playing across the street. In the middle of the night, he went into the bedroom and took Jesse with her little stuffed dolphin that her father had gotten her earlier that week at the, the Florida State Fair. The defendant took her, raped her, buried her alive and murdered her. He put her in two garbage bags and placed her in the ground. John and Vander Cooey, please rise and hearken to the jury's verdicts with counsel. The defendant is guilty of murder in the first degree. What happens when the cameras go away? These are your kids, too, and your bosses. You gonna take these cameras away? You gonna let this die down with Jesse? Could have all ended at the trial, but I didn't want to just punish Cooey. I'm gonna punish all of them. Cooey was a career criminal. He'd been arrested 23 times. Why was he allowed on the streets? He committed this crime before, and they gave him light sentences. One time they gave him a 10-year sentence. He did two years. He could have. At one time he broke into a house and uh, assaulted a child, and he'd have got more time if he'd have stole their silverware. You know, the system, they just, I guess, I never knew. I never had any idea. How bad it was? Yeah. And it's when it comes to these kind of cases, crimes against children, people are getting away with it. So why not get tough? It's time to. He made up his mind he was going to make a difference. Whatever way he had to do it, he was going to get out there and he was going to do it. He quit his job and away he went. I went up to Tallahassee and testified for Jesse's law. I couldn't even speak when I got there. I was too emotional. But uh, not one person voted no, not one person. 
It's 25 years to life for a lewd and lascivious molestation of a child under the age of 12. All sex offenders are supposed to be tracked to get uh, released from prison or charged after Jesse's Law was written. Schools have to do background checks on everybody. The public's supposed to be notified now when a sex offender moves to the area. Going to Tallahassee was all the proof I needed that you know, if you speak out as a victim or, or as a parent as a victim, that they'll change things. With great pride, I will sign the Jessica Lunsford Act into law. Sex offenders like the man who molested and murdered eight-year-old Jessica Lunsford now faces the death penalty. Others whose victims survive face a mandatory minimum of 25 years. The opportunity to expand this is something you're wanting to do, to move this around the nation. And there are plenty of places uh, that are not taking this seriously enough. We reported on a story yesterday in Texas. They let out a two-time offender, although he's told them he probably molested several hundred children. Well, I mean, it's, if that's the way they're doing it in Texas, they need to tighten up. It started with Pennsylvania, uh, was the first state I went to, and it was, everything is a big learning experience. You know, you know absolutely nothing about what you're doing. So it's kind of like being five years old and being in kindergarten. All these states were calling, and I just went as they called, and then uh, as, as it progressed, I started working with uh, Stacy from Stop Child Predators. And then we start uh, contacting states. And she knows the risks of running with me <laughs> because if I get there and it's not what I want, I'll tell them it's not what I want, which can be a little shocking to them. We went, you know, Pennsylvania, Kentucky, I mean, just all, just everywhere. And each time there's resistance to Jesse's law. The main problem is judges don't like and prosecutors don't like mandatory sentencing because it takes discretion away from them. Why do you want to plead with these guys? How many times do they have to commit this crime before you put them away? Representative James Fagan, a defense attorney, was on the House floor debating Jessica's law. He says it would destroy kids on the witness stand. I'm going to rip them apart. I'm going to make sure that the rest of their life is ruined. That's because when you are in court and you are defending somebody's liberty and you are facing a mandatory sentence of those draconian proportions, you have to do every single thing you can do on behalf of your client. In Utah, Jessica's Law is not getting anywhere. Joining us now from St. George, Utah, is Cliff Donovan, a radio talk show host. And from Tampa, Mark Lunsford, you go to Salt Lake City, the capital of Utah, what happens to you? We go into uh, one of the buildings there and... Uh, Nobody shows up, no, uh, no political figures, uh, nobody, N not law enforcement. It made me feel real bad, you know, because, I mean, I was, I, you know, I'm going to every state trying to push this. Now, Mr. Donovan, you've been in the state for a while. So what do you think's going on here? Well, uh, w with great sympathy for Mr. Lunsford and for everyone who loses a child, especially under these circumstances, I am opposed to mandatory minimums. I think Jessica's law has no chance to pass in that state. <laughs> I'm going to try to get this out, and I don't know if I can. <laughs> Predators for war. The biker community and truck drivers were the first to come when I asked for help.
Angie had had in our marriage, the one time we was together, she had like seven miscarriages. Found out it was an RH factor and she had to have a shot. That's all it was. She got pregnant with Jesse and everything worked out just fine. So then uh, me and her you know, broke up. She called me up, told me to come get Jesse. Got a lawyer, got a divorce, got custody. Uh, I managed a wood waste recycling facility in North Carolina. They knew I was a single parent, and Jesse used to go to work with me. She used to uh, play on the mulch piles, help me run heavy equipment. She'd drive the truck for me, and she could run a track hoe, a dozer. It was just me and Jesse, and Grandma and Grandpa moved to Florida. We missed them, so one day I looked at Jesse and said, you want to move to Florida? And she said yes, so off we went. I felt like a slow pace area would be a good place to raise kids. Home assassin, I said slow pace, and that was, a, that was an overstatement. There is no pace in home assassin. <laughs> but mom and dad helped me out a lot with her, you know, while I worked. On the weekends, I'd take Jessie to eat and to uh, sing karaoke. She liked to sing Pink. She liked to sing Shania Twain. Christmases were always good, birthdays, parties, you know, normal life. Uh, it's a pretty smile, too. Jess, she was born 10, 6, 95. What do you want to be when you grow up? I like it very, very good. pretty sad that it's going to take the father of a little girl that was kidnapped and brutally raped and murdered to make a difference for the rest of our kids. Why didn't these cops that failed her, why didn't the FBI that failed her, why aren't they the ones stepping up for these kids? Why aren't they the ones saying, okay, this is what we did wrong and this is what we're going to change. This is what we're going to do different. They should have learned everything they needed to learn off of Jesse and what they allowed to happen to her. You step back and you look. They're parked right across the street from this little girl. They're parked there when he's dumping her out of a back window in garbage bags to bury her alive. I think that there has to be accountability because they said, you know, well, we did everything that we were supposed to do. You didn't search that house. They spent a lot of time right here at my house and uh, filled my yard full of cops, but not one time did they walk into that house across the street. When you were talking about King's house, mm -hmm. had you ever even noticed that house before? No, not, not until they said something about it. I mean, I see it every day now. If you had known that he was living in that house, would you have gone over there and looked around? Well, if I'd have known where he lived and I'd, I found out that he was a sex offender or that he'd done things to hurt kids, yeah, I'd have went over there. She was there, but they didn't see her or they didn't try. I asked them if they was doing a door-to-door -door search and why they said yes, they would. But which, in fact, I found out later on, like, you know, after the search, after we found her, that they did not. And the whole time she was right there behind the command center, and he even took and dug that hole while the command center was there. What were these guys doing? So these command centers are supposed to be placed no closer than a fourth of a mile from the family residence, and oftentimes they're placed at least a mile away. And this one was placed right in the Lunsford's front lawn. It was actually blocking the view between Lunsford's home and Cooey's home. The dogs that they generally use to follow scents 
um, weren't able to follow any sense because the scene had been contaminated by too many bodies. Lunsford has since recalled the dogs running up to where the RV was and then just stopping. I've talked to experts in the field of missing child cases. They have told me professionally that the police conducted critical errors during the first day that resulted in um, Jesse's ultimate death. Now keep in mind that Kiwi has, has confessed to keeping her alive for approximately three days uh, in a trailer while the police and uh, media were outside. I think for procedure-wise, response-wise, it really was a textbook response. We, we did not and we will not change any procedures. We, we followed the, the correct procedures. And there's things that we have to abide by. The other major error um, was focusing in only on Mark Lunsford and Archie Lunsford. They held him for the better part of three days in police custody while his daughter was missing. If you can imagine the agony, uh, it was absolutely horrific. Just crazy. None of you two, right? I'm sorry, man. I just, I just had to tell her. Can you turn that off? Because I can't have you upset when you take tests. You need a Kleenex? Well, somebody's got to tell me why your, why your father isn't like this. He, he won't talk to us. He won't explain those things, and he's not excited about it. He's going to stay there and sleep. I'm not saying he did anything. I know. I'm just saying it looks bad. But right now, everything that we got so far is pointing at you. I'm not guilty of anything except love and a grandchild. If you had to get an education to do this, many of your money was wasted. Where's my father? Where's my father? Archie? Yeah. Your son wants to talk to you. Dad, I swear I'm gonna blow up on him. Well, I'm about to do the same. They're accusing me, Mark. I know. They're telling me the evidence points toward me, the DNA evidence. What? I don't understand DNA. How they? I don't understand DNA evidence. Do they know where Jesse's at? No. That's all I keep telling. Them. I just, I just want to find Jesse. And they, they keep telling me that they think you know where she's at. And I told them that. I said I can't question my dad like that. They want me to ask you, Dad, if you know where Jesse's at. I'm sorry, Dad. I need you to ask me. No, just forgive me. Dad, I have I'll to forgive you. you. I forgive you. When he tried to get up and leave, they manhandled him. They grabbed him, put him up against the wall, put his arms behind his back. It's true. He told me that. Yeah. And But yeah. wait a minute. We weren't arrested. And why, why all of a sudden were we, why were we the bad guys? Was I a bad guy because I had long hair and because I said I smoked pot? All the sheriff would ever do was get out in the media and say, well, there were some red flags, or my dad was a, had done this kind of crime before, which was all a lie. I, you know, I, I told people everybody was in question, and I apologized to Ruth and Archer for putting them through the agony we put him through, but we really weren't representing them. We weren't representing Mark. We were trying to find a little girl. These pedophiles like John Kiwi are, are like wild animals. And, um, you know, the police didn't protect Jesse from this wild animal when they could have. And uh, should they be held accountable for the failures? I'll tell you, Mark is a great guy because even with all of this information, um, he hasn't given us uh, any green light to file any type of litigation. Uh, in fact, I think what Mark would prefer uh, is that they change their ways. We've read every study that's out there. We've worked with lawmakers all across the country, with activists all across the country, with psychologists all across the country. And what really works when you're talking about getting sex offenses to stop happening, you lock a sex offender up behind bars for a long period of time. That way he is not able to get out of his own home and walk down the neighborhood, walk down the street into his neighbor's house and abduct a young child. People like Mark are, are willing to put their personal 
um, grief sort of aside, at least enough to be able to go out and try and prevent this from happening to another family. And it's just an amazing, amazing feat, and it's something that he, he's admired for by legislators and activists all over the country. I got a phone call from the, the Lieutenant Governor of Texas, and we talked for about two and a half hours about Jesse's Law, about what happened to her, and about how I felt, and what I thought, what I thought we should do. What, what a 10th grade education truck driver thought we should do. Because I'd been to so many states. Don't wait in New York till something happens to another child. The Commonwealth needs to adopt the Jessica Lunsford Act. It's up to us to lean on your senators and on your lawmakers. Today, Mark Lunsford is here to plead with the Assembly. Under Texas law, first offense can result in, in as little as probation. That's why I asked Mark Lunsford to be with us today. States are using Jesse's law to fall in compliance with the federal bill, but there is no money. And I don't know what I'm supposed to tell the rest of these states. For Governor Chris, it's Mark Lunsford. I've been to 26 states, and you know, some states I go to more than once. Good to see you again, Mark. I'll make another trip up here. <laughs> you bet. Kentucky, Michigan, Ohio, California. I spoke everywhere. The schools, car dealerships, community centers, businesses, people's homes. Every time I get a chance to speak, I tell them about Jesse's law. Just tell him verbally what you're looking for. If I just have a small scale of adjuster, because yeah. I'd like to try to keep it right underneath my ribs. Yeah, I'd like to keep it underneath your <laughs> Because too, that really hurts. <laughs> but yeah. I just thought it would look good with, because the tip side would be, yeah. the low side would be on facing her. Yeah, yeah. Uh, we can go on the rib, it's just, it sucks, that's all. Right, no, I know. It's but it's okay. Yeah. It, it'd be all right. Yeah, right, that right. was 16 hours. Right. So, I know. Yeah. I wanted to get the tattoo, but I could have went to any artist. I could have went to Michelle, you know, the I one that did Jesse. Jesse's, yeah. But that wasn't the point. The point was to be able to get back on the TV and to talk about, you know, hey, you know, it's easy. All you got to do is call your legislators. Because people don't do it. All you got to do is register to vote. It makes a difference. That's the whole idea is to keep talking about it. Conversation. Conversation is awareness. Awareness is education. Education is power. Me and uh, Jesse used to argue about who loved each other the most. And one day I told her, I said, you know, I love you this much. And that means I love you all the way around. And she looked up at me. And she said, Daddy, I love you this much. And nothing will come between us. The day Jesse disappeared, law enforcement went to Cooey's address and asked his housemates if they had seen him, and they had said no, and they never asked to search the trailer. Police received tips from persons who had said that Cooey was a sex offender. Her death was a result of a system that had failed her and us. I have never spoken of these police failures publicly until today. He had a cop standing up against the wall like this, and he was in plain clothes, but he had his badge hanging around his neck. And when Mark was telling him how the police department failed Jesse, that cop did this. He covered his badge, and he looked at the woman next to him and said, I've never been so embarrassed to be a policeman, a police officer. People are so ignorant to what went on during the investigation that they're handing out awards to the sheriff for a great job. Two weeks before her abduction, they went to that house, and the sheriff deputies did, and uh, they were told that he had a warrant for his arrest, and they were told to arrest him, but they didn't. The first day of the disappearance, they went to the house, but they didn't ask to search. Second day, they went to the house. Whoever came to the door was openly nervous and shaken, but they didn't ask to search. That's what that was in the police report.
I had the wife I married from high school. We had three kids. When we separated, I took Gerald and Elizabeth, she took Josh, but very seldom would I get to see Josh. She wouldn't let me. You're in my seat. Here, Josh, you can sit right here. I got a chair in the Dad? Remember when uh, we was watching Jessie and she went walking across the... It comes, yeah, 7 o'clock in the <laughs> damn morning. Little girl walks across the parking lot with her house shoes. And her nightgown. And her snow on the ground. So she was going to get her daddy. I'm good, how are you, honey? Not too bad. All over. You looking good? Oh, thank you. I see you on TV all the time. <laughs> see, I'm so proud of him. That's my cousin. I used to babysit him. Hey. Uh, really? I think I was nine when Jesse was born. She was daddy's baby. I would never have imagined what happened to her. That never, that never crossed my mind. Josh, look at this thing! Josh, you must look at this thing! Are you ready? 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 Are Lean forward. Lean forward. It's great. I have a father figure in my life. A real father figure. Ready, Josh? No knees, Josh. Tonight, Mark Lunsford now is dealing with the arrest of his son. The teenager's accused of an inappropriate relationship with a young girl. Mention the word sex offender and most people think of John Cooey, the man convicted of sexually assaulting and killing nine-year-old Jessica Lunsford. Now, her half-brother, 18-year-old Joshua Lunsford, is facing a charge of unlawful sexual conduct with a minor. According to Ohio authorities, Joshua Lunsford put his hands in the pants of his 14-year-old girlfriend while they were kissing, so officials have charged him with a fourth degree felony. I mean, these were two kids that were boyfriend and girlfriend. Then when he turns 18, you want to get pissed off at him because him and your daughter were, might have been kissing and touching each other or whatever. They're teenagers. It's only their nature. But Romeo doesn't need to go to jail because of Julia. Hey, go get ready and call me and let me know what's going on. Uh, sorry about your son. And, uh, just uh, kick in a little the irony of the whole situation is whether or not he is going to have to register as a sex offender. They picked on him because his last name was Lunsford. I can't think of any other reason why they would so aggressively pursue this kind of case. The prosecutors generally have been extremely hostile to the passage of Jesse's law around the country. They don't like it because uh, on paper at least it seems to eliminate their ability to have um, discretion in uh, filing charges uh, and in um, uh, uh, accepting plea deals. Maybe this is some payback on their part, I don't know. Fuck t-shirt. Oh yes, we, we must pick out some more briefs and boxers. I got my Scooby-Doo's over, you wanna see them? Scooby-Doo! <laughs> <laughs> In the beginning, I, I talked to a lot of people, and then one day I talked to Mark Class, and then after that, I just call him whenever I wanted to, once or twice a week, maybe a couple times in a day, and I could ask him anything I wanted, and he'd give me a straight up, just how it is, truth. 
When I got into this, when he got into this, we were victims of a situation that was very liberal in its thinking, that allowed hideous, horrible psychopaths to be on the streets to get their hands on our kids. We're turning that. That's what it's about. There's overzealousness. Overzealousness on our parts, overzealousness on the parts of the people that are writing the laws. When this happened to Jesse, I was like, you know what, just herd them all up. Fuck them. I don't give a fuck what they do. Herd them all up. If they're, if they're not guilty and they get found guilty of something they did, it's just, well, that's casualty. You know, an innocent person gets found guilty. At least we get the bad guy. And uh, now I wish I would have thought that. Because I got a little boy that was found guilty today of something he didn't do. I think there should be a criteria for being on the sex, to be a register, to have to register as a sex offender. If you're 18 years old, mom and dad got mad because you did the nasty with their daughter. That doesn't fit the criteria as a sex offender, pedophile, someone who molests children. You know what I mean? That's just a couple of kids. When I talk to states, I'm like, dude, 12 years and younger, those are the kids I'm fighting for. Majority of the Democratic members are opposed to minimum mandatories. I normally am too, but not when it comes to crimes against children. It means a lot to me, Congresswoman. I'm an example of someone, after your daughter's story, that until this last year didn't let my kids hang out in front of my house, specifically because of your daughter's story. Uh, I don't know how you all do this. Every single solitary time you do something like this. You relive a little piece of that incredible tragedy. I just can't, I just can't breathe, and I can't talk. Uh, hold on. Okay. So, that's what I don't know, man. It's just, it's like three or four times already today. I just, I can't breathe. I just get real excited. I can't talk or nothing. Jesse, everything in my life changed from the, and I and truly mean everything between the grass being green and the sky being blue. Dude, I can't even be normal with, with, with my girlfriend because there's sometimes that I have visions and I can't be, I can't, what's that word? I can't be, uh, Intimate? Intimate. Because of the things that's running through my head. I, I broke up with Jeanette because, you know, it was just too stressful for me to be in a relationship and have to do what I do. I'm not going to turn my back on none of these kids. I'm not going to turn my back on them so I can have a relationship and be normal. Because I've already settled in my mind. We're not normal anymore. We're not normal. We're angry. We're hurt, and we lost the most precious thing that we will ever have in our life, ever. It can never be replaced. You can get a new girlfriend. You might find a better one, but you ain't never going to get a kid like the one you had. Never. can see how he's just grown up over the last few years. He couldn't just be Mark Lunsford. He, now he had to be Mark Lunsford, Jessica Lunsford's dad. If you look just in this scene here, you can see a man who doesn't know really what's going on. He just knows that he's hurting and he wants vengeance. Fast forward, he's in a suit, he's in a tie. He still has the long hair, but he takes the sunglasses off for interviews and the emotions are, are held in check for the most part, and he has a message and he focuses on it. I think Mark's a better person. And I think Mark uh, has a passion now and 
I, I think that's great. I, I think he'll tell you the same thing. This is a good, not a good thing, but at least he's turned it into the best it could possibly be. He's really become a child advocate. Uh, he speaks for Jesse. He speaks for all the missing, abducted, murdered children um, that are out there. He's grown. You know, Mark used to communicate with dispatchers, and now he's communicating with senators. The Love Sponge Show. Mark Lunsford is experiencing a huge backlash after word of his intent to sue the Citrus County Sheriff's Office got out. This is the Bubba Love Sponge, fat ass, outspoken, extraordinaire, and I say that Mark Lunsford is a complete ass wipe, stealing money, dickhead, and needs to come talk to me face to face. Come to my studio, you little crackhead. Well, it appears 91% of our audience feels the same way you do. There is very little support for him, but a significant amount for Sheriff Dossie. I read some of these emails to Mark's attorney. Find out how badly this investigation was botched and how much the sheriff... Can, can I be honest with you, and I don't mean this disrespectfully, a little fall on Jessica, but I could care less how much it's been botched. The public knows nothing. The public is all about criticism, man. I mean bashing, man. Because we're suing the sheriff's department, they don't like me anymore. They think I'm a jerk, a scumbag, money hungry. Here's the deal. You have you have uh, protocol, policies, and procedures, okay? The only way you can get them to change things like that when they go wrong is you take all the evidence, all the proof that you have that what they did wrong, and you sue them for that. And what happens is they make all these changes. It's not about money because in the state of Florida, well, one, they ain't got no money. Uh, okay, so you can't sue them for what they ain't got. Two, there's a cap on Florida, 200000 That wouldn't pay the attorney fees. I don't think I need to tell you which radio station we were listening to on the way up where you were Bubba, wall coverage. Bubba's jealous. Obviously, it's not just Bubba the Love Sponge that's uh, criticizing you right now. I mean, you know, we, we have, you know, on, on our website, we've got people all over the place. We've I mean, talked the, to people the, in, the in your right thing right. has been well, are, you, are you that way? Are you judgmental? Uh, Would you judge me? <laughs> okay, but when you're not paid? Not real well. But not real well? So you're judgmental? You don't know the other side? Um, again, you know, I think the public needs to know what happened. Yeah. Okay. Prior to filing the letter of intent to take the sheriff to court, he was never approached previously to change policies and procedures. Yes or no? The sheriffs have said, has stated over the last three years to me and everybody else that this is That's a textbook right. investigation and that they and that if he had it to do over again, he would do it exactly the same way. Is that offering to change policies and procedures? There was a lot of controversy in the news. They put a spin on it. The thing that needed to be on people's minds was policy and procedures and, hey, Sheriff, just change them and this guy go away. I called the Sheriff up and I said, look, I am so sick and tired of the circus that this has turned into. He would come by one day, we spoke privately, just me and him, no attorneys. He answered my questions and he understood what I felt was wrong. The last answer at the very end was acceptable, that he would work with me to change policy and procedures. Not just here, but everywhere. The redneck tactics are on their way. <laughs> <laughs> Close your eyes and we'll all disappear. <laughs> see what? Now I can't see you. <laughs> what a pleasure it is to meet you. You know, if I cover one up, I can only see half of you. Election night, I always get a big suite up there for $150.
Stacy said that the, the, the bill will, will focus mainly on 12 and under. It's in our state, the child is considered 13 13's okay. and under. 13 is okay. Yeah, 13 is okay. Any, anyone under. Still keeps us away from the room and the jewelry. Yes. Okay. When I pick you up in the morning, I'll uh, I'll brief you on the bill. Okay. Good morning. I like you. I like the coat. You like that? Yeah. Going to get three, three to three to life. I, I just, the, I just don't like that, and I think that's. I, I'm not agreeing with the language here. I understand what you want to do, but I don't agree with what it says. Yeah, the judge finds quote that it's in the interest of justice to lower that penalty. He can lower the attempted penalty. Um, I really don't like that provision, but it's one that we had to compromise on in order to get this law to pass. Right, because they don't want to lose discretion. Yep, I had been a sex crimes detective, a child sex crimes detective, and I was really getting tired of some of the light sentences that were being handed down. And so I thought, damn it, I'm gonna run. It was my number one campaign effort. They've done a tremendous <laughs> amount of proactive work to stop Jessica's law. That proposal is called Jessica's Law in memory of Mark's nine-year-old daughter. The bill is now heading to the House floor for debate. Can you sit on that microphone over here and you can sit right here? Uh, thank you very much for coming in. That's, uh, uh, I'm so, uh, it, I, I, I've never heard of anything more horrendous. Um, horrendous. Your daughter was just beautiful. Those photographs of her, just gorgeous little thing. because you said she was so beautiful. You know what I'm going to do, don't you, Boaz? <laughs> oh, that's oh, look. <laughs> we have a lot of work to do, not just in Utah, but in every state. Uh, you know, we have to go back and we have to look at our laws and we have to determine what's going to be a sufficient punishment. I think that if you hurt a child under the age of 12 years old, if you rape a child, um, you know, molest a child that you, you don't deserve to be in society because that is what you're driven by. You're, you are driven by a lust for children and we don't want you on our streets. Uh, from the Utah House Representatives, Representative Carl Weber, the plea down option. In the paper it said that you would give sentencing justices the latitude to sentence these people to as little as three years in jail. That's, that might seem unsatisfactory. Yeah, it's, it's actually very unfortunate. It's one of those uh, it's one of the political realities. What political people are saying, we don't want that, we want the option of giving them something less? Well, it's actually a, a whole group of people. It's, uh, you know, uh, several of the prosecutors. And not, uh, and not to be negative on the thing, but like a mandatory sentence that isn't mandatory ends up not being all that satisfying. Can't you have a forgive the use of the Lord's name? Can't you have a come to Jesus on this? Can't you stand up there and say, we'd like to pass legislation without a loophole for child rapists? This guy's harsh, isn't he? <laughs> Don't whiz on my leg, tell me it's raining. Do not say, oh, well, yes, I voted for that. Uh, I don't like this bill. Nope. And it was very unfair for them to bring me all the way up here and me not know nothing about the bill until I get here. And then I learned bits and pieces of it. Uh, joining me on the house floor today is Mark Lunsford, the father of Jessica. Yeah. Uh, three different things that they can bleed to, first degree. That's actually a very, very good question. I mean, everybody's going to sleep uh, three to one. Everybody. See, then here increases the minimum of imprisonment.
Uh, Mark, tell me a little bit about this bill and what it means to you and how you're showing it today. It took me a couple of days to to really understand it. Last night, I, mean, I had a lot going through my mind. We all talked again today to kind of clarify some things on it. If you attempt to rape a child, you'll get 15 to 1. If you rape a child, you get 25 to 1. They'll always try to plead down. So what the legislature did was give them something to plead down to without walking away from the crime completely. And it's three to life. But what happens is, is if a judge gives you that, then he has to, you know, in writing, explain why. So that makes it kind of unique, because now the public is going to be aware of what that judge or that prosecutor does. And, and that's going to help out a lot. Thank you, Representative Bowman. Boyd is now holding the House Bill 256. Jessica Law. Seeing all, seeing all present having voted. One thing that I can say for certain about Mr. Lunsford is that he reduces issues to the lowest common demeanor, demeanor so that they are universally understood. <laughs> that is his power and that is why he has had such amazing success. I'm very sorry. And she's, she's making a big difference. Yes, she is, and I'm sure she's very proud. <laughs> she's making a very big difference. Very good. And that's, that's Your so honor and your memory very well. Well, I'm buying my ticket this year. <laughs> <laughs> Sweet Jesse, I can say 